What's up, G Pack Nation? This is Daryl G coming back to you. This is actually me coming back to you reloaded. Um, I just want to mention a few things. If you are like in the basketball world, you probably have, you know, heard of um, you know, Kwame Brown. Um and um I actually was watching him when he was, you know, posting stuff on Facebook, you know, he was talking about the same stuff like trades and all of that stuff for uh, uh, young black kids and all the influence and, you know, and um, the lack of men in our community, you know, he, he was already talking that stuff. So my, my, um, my take on it, I just want to bring some, you know, some, my, I'm going to put some of my little cooking on top of this, you know what I'm saying? So, um, Kwame Brown actually, if you know, if you don't know, if you don't know the history of Kwame Brown, he was the first round draft pick, um, coming straight out of high school, and um, people um, called him the bus. They try to make put him as the face of being the bus. So you know, you you bring these kids out of high school, and they're not gonna do good. That's the idea of it. They're not going to do good at NBA unless they go to college. That's pretty much what they're trying to say, which is pretty much baloney. The way I see it is they decided to make Kwame Brown the face of that. And I think throughout his career, they actively tried to sabotage him and throughout his career. So, I mean... You know, the numbers speak for itself. You know, when he had time in the game, he put numbers up when you put him in the game. You can't put him in the game for a few minutes to take him out and say, oh, he never did nothing. Well, they, they didn't play him like he was supposed to play him. So, um, and I think that was deliberate in, in, in a lot of cases. So, because they already had that narrative. You got to understand, we're talking about a lot of money. So, we're talking about a lot of money that white zaddies can make. That's his word, he, you know, that's what they come up with now. That's what they say now, the white zaddies, right? They can make a lot of money off of young players coming out of high school into college. And they make all this money off their likeness and they pay them nothing. And they can continue to make money off their likeness on and on and on and on. And that's a lot of money that White Zaddy is not going to be able to get his hands on if these kids start coming from high school all the way to the NBA league. So they try to make him the platform form of that. And you had that uh, that dude, Stephen A. I never liked that clown anyway. This dude, Stephen A., you know, he went to um, colleges and high schools and... People still don't know why. Why was this journalist on a national level going to high schools and colleges? And on top of that, talking and downplaying a, a 18 year old kid. You know, what would you go into them colleges, boy? I got people in my family. I got people in my family. My cousin was a good basketball player and he got hurt in his first year, a, a career ending injury. So I got people who want to know that question. So that when I start hearing Kami talk, I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, we do want to know the question to that. You see? Um, what was you doing down at the colleges, boy? I got mamas in my family that want to know. What was you doing at them colleges, boy? What was you doing at them high schools, boy? Right? We want to know now. Because what Kwame has done is opened up some eyes. So, because people have, he was on the inside. Because if you weren't on the inside, you, didn't, you wouldn't have thought of that. Like, you not thinking of, of stuff like that. But now that he brought it to light, a lot of people want to know what was you doing down at the colleges, boy? <laughs> really? 
looking at them high schools, boy. We want to know. So, as we go into this, and then another thing, when I started listening to him, he started talking that Geechee and Gullah. You know, I'm a Geechee. My family, we Gullah. Matter of fact, we still, we still own a lot of property where my mother retired and moved back down to South Carolina. And we, and that's where they build houses at. That's where she at right now. We still on the water. Gullah people, Geechee people, that's where we always was. On the water. We connected to something, like he always said. And when he said that, the hairs went up on my back. I like, oh, I don't know this guy, but I know this guy. You see what I'm saying? So that third eye is something else, boy. That third eye, you see, you, you, you don't get far over that third eye. You see what I'm saying? I've been, that's what I've been hearing all my life. <laughs> you understand? So when he mentioned that Geechee, we already know what it is. But my peoples is from Beaufort, South Carolina. And if, hey, if you ever see this video, Kwame, you take your, your family down to in Beaufort, I think it may be on Paris Island, South Carolina, or Beaufort, it's in Beaufort, it's uh, the uh, Gullah Festival. Every summer, it's either at the end of July or at the end of June or the beginning of August. You got to look it up. But it's real... It, you're going to be surrounded by nothing but Geechee, nothing but good food, you know what I'm saying? All the dirty rice, the gated tail. We on the water, so all the stuff in the water going to be there. All different type of styles. That's how we do. Yeah, it's going to be, it's a mama cooking in, in that Gullah Festival. And you're going to be surrounded by nothing but Geechee. <laughs> so I, I, I've been watching them, and then, you know, as he came out, the reason why he came out is because he had some punk ass suckers like uh, what's his name, Matt Barnes and uh, 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 Jack, Jack, Jack boy, you know CB4. They call him CB4 now. You see, and I I've been watching them fools even before this thing even came out. Been looking at like this dude is a clown, and I've been thought that of Stephen Jackson even before now, and Matt Barnes. And then all his dumb antics he's been out here doing. Like, so. And they were on some, I guess, their podcast making jokes about him. So Kwame came out. And he came out blazing, I tell you. It, it, it is hilarious, I'm telling you. I've had a laugh, laugh for the last two months, especially when he say, Shut your goddamn mouth, you bitch. <laughs> That's hilarious to me. <laughs> and there's a lot of people who need to shut their mouth. So, and so as I'm watching things unfold and as he is putting out a message, his message is, First, he started off with them go along. Get, well, you know, he, he he came when he first came out and hit the scene. It was about them get along, go along, get along, boys. You see, Stephen Jackson type of boys, Stephen A type of boys. They go along to get along. They'll do anything to make sure Zaddy, they white Zaddies, are happy. It's clear. You see, you can you can see it in just the latest news. They put and they do it blatantly right in front of your face. He's such a Stephen Day is such a coon. He do it right in front of our face. And he has no. He doesn't care because he doesn't care to have any sympathy or or to have any forgiveness from us, black people. He doesn't even care that much. He do it right in front of our face. He talked about. Uh, a, a, a Chinese player, baseball player, and he talked about the U.S. Nigerian player, and they all was up in arms about it. What Stephen A. did is he immediately apologized to the Asian people and write letters and everything. Like, oh, I'm sorry, I, and I'm, a, I'm, a, and I'm, a, I'm, you know, on my show tomorrow, I'm gonna make sure I kiss Zaddy, my white Zaddies, and my white Zaddy Chinese friends' asses, right? So. That's what he did. So, 
But, mind you, he didn't apologize to the Nigerians, the blacks, black people. He didn't apologize to them until what? Later on, and it was a half. I wouldn't even accept that apology. You can take that apology, Stephen A. You, 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 you know where you can go with it. Nobody should accept that apology from that stupid punk. You see? He is a sambo dancing punk. I'm going to tell you what Stephen A. is. If you go down south and you from the south, you you already know you have those little black statues with the uh, black babies holding holding their hands up like this. This is the black babies holding the lassos from the horses of the white man when they come up to places. They just have black little kids holding their hands up to hold the horses while they get off and go do what they got to do. And they stand there and hold the horses. They got statues like that. That's Stephen A. They should make a statue of Stephen A holding his hand up just like the little black babies. Holding that white boy's horse. While he go do his bit and he come back and spit on you and tell you to sit your black ass down. <laughs> All right. So, as we go into this, right? <clears throat> so, he... Kwame came out, and he came out blazing at these fools, right? So now he got all type of things coming towards him now, and I've been watching. And one message is he been, he's been going to, is about trades and coding. And let me just give you, give people a little information about why there are no trades in the public schools anymore. There used to be. There used to be plentiful of trades in our public schools. When the people who lived in the inner city weren't black. When the people who lived in the inner city were white. Because remember, white people, who they lived in the inner city. They went to the public schools. So I want you to understand, the public schools who they are horrible with no resources, they weren't like that. They didn't used to be like that. That is a purposely done thing to us by the white supremacy in this country. Purposely done. Do you understand? So, let me just give you a little information. When black people started to migrate from the outskirts or in, from down south, and from other places into the inner cities because it was closer to factories and trying to get jobs and things. Of course, that's where people wanted to be. So that's when you had the white flight. So the white flight was when the suburbs were, suburbs were created. The white flight was all the white people moved out of the inner cities into the outskirts because they didn't want to live around black people, right? So, after that happened, the white kids are now out in suburban schools, right? So, those trades that were in the inner city schools, the public schools that your black babies go to now, went with the white kids. All the resources, all the resources, and you, you look around the inner city schools and the public schools now, you see, where are the resources to help? They, they used to have the resources. They took all those resources on purpose out of those schools and neighborhoods and put them into the suburban schools with the white kids. They focus all the resources out there. They have all the trades and stuff. So let me let you understand what the real is with this. So now that you suck all of that out, I'm a, and, and I want Kwame Brown, if you see this video, I want you and want people who are for the trades like myself, I am for, because I'm a tradesman myself. So we're all for the trades. You see, I can go anywhere and get a job. You see? So I, I just want to make sure people understand what you're fighting against. You're fighting against something that was deliberate. You're fighting against something that 
people do not want to happen. They don't want to happen. And the reason why they will fight tooth and nail, the white supremacy in this country will fight tooth and nail to make sure that that does not happen. It's because that means that if you train those black boys for those same trades and those same coding things, guess what? They are going to be competing for the jobs of those white boys. And if you have all these black kids learning these things, you know what's going to happen? They're going to start out competing these white kids. And they already know it. You understand? They are not going to allow that to happen without a fight. Because that means these black kids are now competing for those trade jobs or contracts. They're now starting their own businesses and doing things like everybody else. They don't want us to do that. <laughs> they don't want us to do that. And they definitely don't want to have you competing for you their contracts and their jobs and their kids' jobs. So that's a deliberate thing that they did on purpose. So when we are making this fight, understand you're going to have people who are going to fight against that at every level, at the highest levels. They are going to fight against putting these type of programs in black schools and neighborhoods. They are going to fight tooth and nail. So, with that being said, we understand where we're at. So, I, I, I just want to make sure people understand what you're fighting up against. That, that doesn't mean that I say we don't fight. We all should fight to the last for our kids. These are for our kids. You better fight. But we also got to understand the enemy that we're fighting up against. And what we're going up against in order to overcome what we're trying to do. This here is not going to be no easy thing trying to get this stuff. First of all, you know, even at your local level and you want to push for your governor or your mayor to put these things back in the school. They're going to have a fight even at the mayoral level and even at the governor level, even to get these things back in the public school. They're going to say, we don't have the money for it. We're not going to. We, we, that's going to be their excuse. But the real excuse is they don't want those black boys competing with those white kids. You understand? When you see all these trades, all these trucks running around with all these trades on it electrician plumbing plumbing they all these companies ran by white boys they all these white boys didn't go to a college bound they push us to college and say that's the only way you're gonna get out is college and get into a whole bunch of debt and all of that and they teach them the trades and to go start businesses and do stuff shit like that and that's why they got all those trade businesses and, and when you see all the plumbers and stuff they mostly white all the electricians mostly white because they got those trades in the high schools they took their resources that the, in the schools that they used to be in and they put it out to the schools that they went to and they got those trades that's why they're mostly white so that's just a little information for you so I just want to get into, and then we're going to follow the track all the way down the road with this. So now Kwame is in here and he's trying to push this type of stuff. He got all type of these sucker and these punk and these haters coming out, coming on and coming after him. And if you notice, like he always said, they never come at the message. What the message is getting our black boys on the right track and teaching them and showing them and putting the right things in front of their eyes and put the right things in front of their hands and put the right things in their ears. The visual of a man handling his business and taking care of business. So I just want, and, and this guy is funny, man. He had me laughing for, oh boy, he, he had me laughing for the last couple months. 
Especially when you talk about the lesser charge. Oh, the lesser. See, if we if we can go all the way down the road because see, after the Matt Barnes thing blow up, lesser charge, which is Charlemagne the God. If you look up on Charlemagne the God, he sexually assault. Well, I guess he raped Andrea Reed. I think that's her name. A girl back in the days and he took a lesser charge and that's why Kwame calls him lesser charge he didn't get acquitted of it he just was able to plead to a lesser charge because he was able to plead to a lesser charge protecting he's a part of the go along get along game so if you look at Charlemagne the God and all the stuff that he has done. So when he came on the scene, he started talking about Kwame, his family, and his 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 father was a killer, and all of this nonsense. Like, who the fuck is you? Are you kidding me? But now, I I oh I never never liked Charlemagne the God. He always was a punk. He always sat on that studio and asked these men all type of crazy stuff, women all type of crazy stuff. I knew, I knew back then, so then even before I knew all the stuff about him, like it's just something in me. Like I, I do not like this dude. And then now when you look in some of the deeper stuff of Charlemagne the God, as he made a mole of his ass and his nuts. He brought it to the thing and started throwing it around. And 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 and, and Kwame, Kwame was mentioning all this. He was throwing it around at Darnell um, um, Rawlings, the comedian. You throwing this at a grown man. He's sniffing seats. Who does nasty stuff like that? And this and now people's eyes are open. What the hell are they putting in front of our kids and stuff, right? The, the BET Awards. You got this little, little Nas X nigga. Hey, listen. What are they putting in front of our kids? You got people's eyes open now, Kwame. Because I want to ask, I want to know. What the f are they putting in front of our kids? This punk ass sucker. Listen, I, 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 I ain't even gonna go there. Because Charlemagne the God is a nasty punk that sniffs women's seats when she get up. Who does nasty stuff like that? A real man, if he see a woman he like, he gonna holler at her and see if he get with her. If he get with her, he can. Put his nose wherever he wanted at. That's what a real man gonna do. <laughs> he not gonna sniff her seat when she get up. You punk. Oh. Uh, see. We Geechee. We Geechee too. <laughs> we still on the waters. We still in the swamps. We still living off the water. You see? So. Yeah. And he throwing around all of this stupid stuff and talking all these, asking all these dumbass questions to women when they come up, come up there, sexual questions. And people overlooked it until now. I think it's a lot of people got their eyes open now. They looking at you lesser charge. And I hope there is some reckoning that comes for what you did to that girl. One day, when, when White Zaddy feels like he, don't, he it's not worth it to protect you anymore, you're going to be done, boy. <laughs> That's what they do. They use up niggas who, them Sambo Negroes who do it, they use you up, and when they done, you get tossed to the side. When they feel like it ain't worth to protect you no more, 
you go, they gonna toss you to the wolves. And that's usually when them Negroes start running back to the black people like, oh, support me. Nah, nigga. Nah. When they get done with you, they gonna throw you to the wolves, boy. Yeah. That's that Geechee shit. And see, I connect with that. <laughs> this man make me laugh, man. He's a funny, funny joker. <laughs> he, he said he called he called him a patch eye demon. He called Kwame calls uh uh Charlem I don't even like calling him Charlemagne the God. You ain't no God, you sucker. You's a freak, nasty, freak mother sucker. That's what you are. <laughs> Somebody that shouldn't even be around kids. Spanish fly ass nigga. But, all right. So let's move on. So now we get to the lesser charge. And see, he tried to come out and apologize. And now he ain't saying nothing else now about Kwame Brown. <laughs> but Kwame Brown, they keep, we own you now. It's too late now. We know who you are. Because it's justice that need to be done in your case. You see? It's justice that need to come your, come your way in your case. So, Yeah. So as we move on down the line, like I tell you, he got haters. So they move on in and see, you, what he started talking about is he started highlighting the type of Negroes that we have in our community that are persuading our young boys to act like, as he put it, feminized little punks. You see? So, or to act like glorify all of the street stuff and all of the shooting and killing. I rock your stop box type of niggas that be in our neighborhoods. That send the little young boys to go shoot up something. Then they go spend the rest of their life in prison. And then you have culture vultures. Who really ain't about nothing. But soon as somebody who is about something, who come and stand up and say, hey, this is what we're about to do. You see punks like this. I'm about to play the video. You see, this is right. Uh, fair use, fair use. This is a video of, this is Kwame Bus Life. So, you know, go subscribe and go watch Kwame Bus Life. And subscribe to his channel. It's interesting. But this is his video, and he playing another video within a video. So fair use all the way around. <laughs> Listen, I don't even really know how this all this works, so I'm just going to put the information out there anyway. So this is how it's going. So these are the people that will come up and first they'll act like they on your team. And then and then they might do a little something. And then if you don't give them credit for it, they're like, oh, you ain't going to give me credit for what I did. See, if, if you're doing it from the heart, you're not really looking. That's not even something that's on your mind. Your mind is not even thinking that way. This is what type of sucker this is. So as we go through 
I just let me just play this video. I just want to give the example because I want to give the comedic side of this because it's funny. I'll tell you. Tell him how much you made off the million views. Shout out to these guys on the screen. Oh, see That's why he's sick, Ted. That is why he's sick. He made zero. Shout out to Ted. See the uh, pop, the dude in the white right uh, here. What is this? Him right you know, there. That's who we looking he at. Came home. I think that's he the one who, uh, that was that putting shot. Kwame videos out and made millions, and had millions of views and didn't even monetize all of it. Cause he you wasn't even smart me. enough to do that. Now he's mad. Yes, I, I thought he had a YouTube channel. I just signed up for the motherfucker. Where's that? I don't know. Somebody will put it in the chat. But this is why he mad. Let's run it back. He mad because. No, no, tell him how much you made off the million views. Huh? Tell the people. Zero. <laughs> <laughs> This guy at one time had more zeros. views on <laughs> my videos. He keep acting like he edited the videos. He didn't edit the videos. He simply posts my videos. And at the time, I was so new that he posted my videos damn near faster than I did. And I guess he had a network of guys, and he got more views on my video than I did. And somehow, I'm supposed to owe him something. When if he had his page monetized, he could have sprinkled some mama's cooking on his family. So now he's sitting here with the uh, with his homeboy starter kit, the uh, bipolar. And it's not uh, Mr. Campbell. Now they look alike. He got that same stain. That hat must be stained. He wear this goddamn hat every day. Do you got a motherfucking Oxford Polaroid hat? And your dumb ass probably ain't getting paid all day. You just want plum dumb. That's why he mad. I'm a die bro, cause I'm a real nigga. I'm a die bro, cause I'm a real nigga, bro. What? I'm a die bro, cause I'm a real nigga. What about the guy that you're now? Well, you ain't even talk about me. You just posted the video. Well, fuck up the pack when a nigga front you the first. Uh, let me let the video speak for itself. Oh, oh see, that's why he's sick, Taz. That's Never. why he's sick. Never. He's I'm sick. a die bro, because I'm a real nigga. I'm a I'm gonna die broke because I'm a real nigga. Well, you gonna be dying by yourself, broke boy. What kind of sis? What sis does that make? I'm gonna die broke because I'm a real nigga. So I'm gonna die broke. So I'm not gonna leave my family or you, my kids nothing. So now they gotta start all over. So that's why there's no generational wealth. In, in our in our community because we don't build nothing we have not built nothing and there's been reasons why we're, we weren't able to build nothing don't get that wrong but if we're not just based off of his concept if you're not le le if you're dying broke that means you're not leaving your kids or your family the next step up so they don't have to start from zero all over again what kind of foolishness is this? These are the fools that's in our neighborhoods. <laughs> but I know him because I'm a real nigga, bro. He's trying to do it, bro. I'm a guy who broke because I'm a real nigga. Well, then I'm lame as fuck. Okay. Right? Shit, I'm lame. I ain't gonna I'm lame too. Prove I'm a real nigga. You a real <laughs> <guy>. <laughs> I'm lame too. Fuck all of that. Are you <laughs> kidding me? You fucking out your mind, dude. Oh, y'all got a job and money? Y'all ain't fucking real, son. At the end of the day, I was like, okay, he didn't shout me out because I'm a small YouTuber. Everybody else who shouted out was a big YouTuber. Okay, so that's when I said, give me my credit. Now, after I put pressure, your credit. of course, the issue, because I already smelt the bitch on Punk's it. Punk's always comes out credit for something. I didn't give low key to credit <laughs> because he didn't put it. Kwame Brown bus life link to his channel in my description. So I there. If you notice, real men don't never ask for credit for nothing. They just do what they do and keep it moving. 
punks always want credit for something. Uh. There you have it. The bitch knew. I told him. I talked to him. I texted him. I said, hey, nigga. I said, hey, man. That's some bullshit. You're not even putting my uh, my uh, tag in the description box. What is wrong with you? You're not creating nothing. You didn't edit a motherfucking thing. Yeah, Forgotten Kings TV. That's what that was. That's what confused me. I was like, hold on, this nigga got a twin or some shit. <laughs> the shot was Forgotten Kings TV. I'm like, yeah, talk to this motherfucker. That nigga got a twin. The gold. I was like, yeah, gold teeth. But anyway, this little uh, fat, mush mouth motherfucker here. This is the type <laughs> of guy, zero talent, stupid son bitch. That can't even hit a lick when it's dropped in at the goddamn back. <laughs> you will fuck up the pack when a nigga front you the first. Bloop, bloop, bloop. And See, don't I had even to, ask you for it back. He just tell you when you get on to the hook, hook me. I just had to put the comedian side, the, the co comic side of this, too. It's just funny. So I just wanted to just, just play it. <laughs> Bush mouth. Continue. Your dumb ass will lose the whole motherfucker. You are re You an idiot, man. You are straight up dummy. I'm talking about a stupid son bitch that had what <laughs> three million, six million views in two weeks or some shit like that. And I said, you can eat off of it. I allowed you to do it, and you such an effeminate bitch that you still think I owe you. <laughs> this motherfucker didn't edit nothing. He up here talking about I edited it for this guy. Uh, edit, you put everything up. I said, ha, 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 mama's cooking. What you talking about, boy? That was me, motherfucker. <laughs> but talented don't even know how to monetize a goddamn <laughs> Y'all follow the fuck. They don't know how to monetize a page that he got the goddamn content for fucking free. And this is the guy waking up every day. That dog got more sense than you. That dog, if you let go of that leash, that dog a haul ass won't even want no more food for your fat dumb ass. You probably be eating next to him. Cause you know we ain't got no. This guy be the dumbest. All right. I might go swim. I might jump out of subscribe. You hating dumb bitch, you. That's what happened when you were hating. Negativity come your way. When you're not no hater, negativity still gonna come your way, but you can deal with bitch ass niggas like this. <laughs> this is the type of nigga that is taking your sons off the street. Uh -huh. He has no talent. He has no purpose. All he does is talk about other men. He's the hater. Even when another man They wanna gave kill him you because you doing value, better than him. He got ten thousand subscribers or mention in my even using my video and the dumb bitch you still got can't something, get you doing something you the hater that's gonna come and turn anything up there hate on you 10, about it. subscribers that you got dudes like him running around in our neighborhood now, well you ain't even talk about me you just posted the videos up of the guy that you're now dissing like i said yeah, every time know. somebody is doing something these guys right here are the first I ones just hope this rise thing up and say what what he for him you realize that's what digital marketing companies do they charge people to do that. I did that for this idiot for free. So digital marketing. Companies See, this is another dude. I forget what his name. I, I, for millions I of dollars. For and world. you did it for a millionaire for free. And you're calling him the idiot. Right? Hmm. They need to take a look at the mirror, man. Watch when they asked him, okay, did he ask you to edit his footage? No. That's when he asked me to edit his footage. No, nigga, it's the same way y'all y'all put my fucking clips on your channels, and I didn't ask you to do that. The same way we are on a public platform. All right. We put content on YouTube. So. See now, I am all for this message of rooting out these type of people, at least putting a shine on these type of people who glorify, you know, these older people who glorify and do all this and put all this stuff in front of these young boys. You got to put them on blast.
These are silly motherfucking thinking people walking around your neighborhoods right now. Talking about, I'm a dime broke because I'm a real nigga. The only way you're a real nigga is you shoot a motherfucker up and go to prison for the rest of your life. That's what they pushing on our young boys. To be a real nigga, you got to shoot somebody and go to prison for the rest of your life. Be in prison bumping nuts to butt all for, for years. That's what you're going to be doing. Have a white boy slap you around whenever they feel like it. Just like the plantation. And this is what is a you know, and it's music too. These rappers out here, I kill up all my ops. Whoop, 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 whoop. Your ops is never the people who are really attacking black, our whole community and your whole family too. Why is that? Why is your ops always people who look like you, but they're never the people who are really coming for your punk black ass? Why is that? Why is the ops never the people who are really coming for you and your family? The black dude who just as poor as you down the street is not the one coming for you and your family. Who in the same predicament you are in is not your enemy. He's not the one that's going to come really take your goddamn family out. But there's never no smoke towards the people who will pull you out of your car and shoot you in your forehead because they said you moved wrong. Listen, you're going to go do 25 years of the rest of your life in prison anyway. You might as well put in some real work that's going to Make a statement out this motherfucker. Because you're going down anyway. So. Only statement you're making. As we you kill your brother. On the corner of the street. Over a corner. Over a cover. Or over a corner that you don't even own nothing on. You renting somewhere, sucker. So as you kill up everything in that neighborhood and you devalue the properties and then they kick everybody out, regentrify, and then they raise the property values back up. They buy everything at a low at a cheap level and they raise everything back up to make sure your ass can't never move back in them neighborhoods because it's going to be too pricey for you. So, this is where we're at. So, I'm, I, to quiet me, I'm with you, brother. Keep on pushing the message. Keep on keeping it. Put on these suckers' neck. Because we need this message. And you open up a lot of eyes. Because, I, like I said, I got I have black mothers in my family who wants to know Stephen A. Why was you down at them colleges, boy? And why was you down at them high schools, boy? To make sure the black boys get exploited by white zaddies, right? To make sure you can't come out of high school and go make money and take get your family up out the, the ghetto and buy your mama a house. They want to make sure that white zaddy uses you first. Get his money off you first. While you get paid nothing in college. You get nothing. 
They get millions and millions of dollars off your likeness. Stephen A., you sucker. You sap sucker. We want to know, why was you down at the college? What? <laughs> In the high school. <laughs>